Hello everybody, I'm Ard, and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. Today, it's time to say goodbye to this throne. Yep, we're going to have to move it somewhere else because I'm going to go build the platform I'm going to use for Batani in the future, and this is in the way, so it's got to go. I'll have to find a new home for it, and my opening's going to be awkward until I get that sorted out. But let's get started. Okay then, so I made a nice little platform to put some Batania stuff on up here. I might mirror it on the other side of that hall over there, but for now this is a good enough spot to at least get me started. And you might be thinking, Ard, I didn't see you put any stairs on here, or any stairwells, or any elevators, or anything. Um, are you just going to pretend you just fly everywhere nowadays? And yeah, I, I do, but uh, I want to try something new, and it's over here. You see this little hole in the ground. This is a thermodynamics viaduct, and once you have it set up properly and tube wherever you want it to go, you just right click it and go to where you want to go and you go through a tunnel, like a little hamster tunnel, it's pretty great. And this one pops me into my base, right down here by my crafting table. To be clear, there are faster versions of the viaducts, which are these long range viaducts, which aren't that hard to make, honestly, but you need to link them with these long range linking viaducts, which take resin render, which well, we'll get to that in a minute. But they have a startup time when you go into the tunnel. You have to wait a couple of ticks and it's noticeably slow for a distance this short up to that platform over there from here. So I'm not gonna bother with that for this. I might do it if I'm gonna do longer distances, but for now, I didn't really see the point of this. To make these, however, you start with a relatively simple looking recipe, which is just bronze ingots and, well, this is fused quartz, but it's actually hardened glass. And hardened glass, well, we haven't actually started thermal expansion yet, so we can't do the easy way. But we can just do it with pyrothium dust, which is just blazed powder and sulfur, which we're getting tons of from the mob farm. And I've done this a few times already, so I just did made a bunch of that. But this is the untreated viaduct. To finish it, however, you need to fill it with zephyrian erothium, which sounds really intimidating, and it's kind of a pain because to get it, you need aerothium dust, which is made from blitz powder, which means you need some way to kill blitzes over and over. In my case, I went and found a blitz. You can find them in deserts and savannas, and I made a spawner changer, and I just created another restored spawner, just like all my other ones sitting in my mob farm. And that's turning out blitz rods at a pretty decent rate, as well as the niter to make the aerothium dust. So we've got that. That said, just having that isn't enough. Cue my two new machines on the wall back here above my head. The nuclear craft melter and the nuclear craft fluid infuser. And we use these because the melter is what we're using to melt down the dust. And the fluid infuser is what we're using to fill the viaduct up. Making them at this point wasn't all that hard. They required advanced plating, but we've done that a bunch of times. As well as a servo mechanism, which we've also done a bunch of times. None of it's all that hard. It mostly just requires you have steel which we've been making for quite a while now. The only the only variance is this is nether bricks and this is gold in a bucket. So relatively simple to make. As well as most of my nuclear machines, I started adding speed and energy upgrades to uh, make them go faster and, well, in theory make them use less power, but the reality is it's basically at parity with the speed upgrade. So it's just to make it so the speed upgrades don't eat up even more power. And these aren't actually too bad to make. This is just lapis and redstone and iron. And the energy upgrade's a little bit more convoluted, mostly because it requires nether dust, which is just ground up nether quartz. But we don't have a means to automatically get that yet. I still need to set up something to generate that. These are able to pass liquid seamlessly between the two, not through any trick of nuclear craft itself. And I don't have any ducks. I just remembered something that made me feel foolish when I remembered it existed, because they are super, super useful. 
And that's the extra utils flat transfer nodes, which are basically just the shrunk down versions of the normal transfer nodes, which are kind of like the um, thermodynamics ducts, uh, where they let you extract stuff out and pipe them out to another area. Same general concept, except these are tiny and you apply them to the side of a machine. They're kind of like the push and pull ejectors for industrial craft, except you can apply them to any machine. This one's the item one. There is also a liquid one and it's not any harder to make. It's just the same sort of stuff. So that those can pass liquid between each other. I should probably fix a lot of my other machines in this layout to do the same thing. It would make things a bit more combat because there's a couple spots where I have ducts in behind these wall pieces to pass in like liquids between each other. So yeah, I should do something about that, but we'll clean that up later. Well, I just realized I outsmarted myself. If you notice on the left and on the right, I have a fluid infuser and melter combo on both sides. Yep, I made two duplicate sets of machines. I did this in another episode. Somebody's probably screaming at me, trying to tell me that I already did this. My bad. Okay, so back up here. Let's start getting our Bartania stuff set back up. And I gotta be honest, folks, I was about to do the thing where I like, look at these flat transfer nodes they just make. Check out how awesome this is when setting the pedal apothecary back up is. And forgot, you can't automate it with pipes of any sort. So uh, we're gonna do this the old fashioned way. And we're just gonna put it right here. And we're gonna put this right here. And we're gonna put that right there. And we're gonna put a bucket. And we're just gonna have to call this good enough. I don't need to automate this right now anyways. So uh, yeah. Okay, so I got some more Indo Flames made. Not a humongous number, just seven of them, just to get us started. Uh, but let's talk about how we're gonna automate these things. In the first step, the most important step to this is that I'm gonna be using Ender Chest to wirelessly transfer coal up here. And not the normal Ender Chest, the Ender Storage one, which if you weren't familiar with, is an upgraded form that uses the normal Ender Chest. So let me go show you what I did in the base. So I just set it up back here, back my my power setup, just because it needs to be hooked up to a slave somewhere and where doesn't really matter. I set another one on the ground for example purposes to show you how this works. So inside this ender chest, I currently have a single block of coal. That's because this ender conduit has a limited item filter in it, which is set to a block of coal. It only ever allows one block of coal in this chest at a time, okay? If we come up here, you can see that the buttons on top are all black. You can change the color of these buttons to be different channels, up to any combination of these colors that you want. You notice how the one down here is white. This chest has the block of coal. This one does not. If we dye the buttons, all of a sudden, we have access to the block of coal that was in this chest. These are now paired in the same chest. So we can take this chest away and go plug it in back in our Britannia setup. Okay, and back up here, we're going to start with the ender chest. We're gonna put that in there. The block of coal is still in it. We're going to put the transfer node that we made on top of that. Okay, this that thankfully does work. The next thing that we're going to use is the automatic precision dropper from Actually Additions. The advanced coil can make this kind of awkward to make if you aren't already at that step, but we are. And this basically acts the, like the reverse of a normal dropper. This does not spew items out, it only kicks the item out directly in front of the spot that it dispenses from, and it waits for a signal to do so. So what we're gonna do is put it right on top like that and out comes the thing because it doesn't have a signal right now, okay? Next, we're gonna put a pressure plate on top of it. Okay, and now we wait for the pressure plate to reset. And out pops a block of coal. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is set up the mana spreader and mana pool. Give me a sec. As I activate these endo flames, you notice that the dropper is activating and kicking our new piece of coal as it gets eaten and the pressure plate gets deactivated. And while all the endo flames are activated, the coal will just sit on top of the pressure plate and not get used. So all good there. Because we're generating coal at such a rate now out of the sieves that I don't care if we lose a couple of them just to despawning. Uh, there's probably a way to speed this up that I've forgotten about, but it ultimately doesn't matter because we're not using a big layout right here. So we can just leave this alone and just slowly passively get mana. We'll replace it with something bigger with more mana production later. Oh, I never did explain why I'm using coal blocks here, did I? So the way endo flames work is it's not based on the power of the fuel, but the total burn time on it. So making red coal in this case that I made for the compression dynamo is not too far back. 
isn't as useful here. What you want are things with a longish burn time. In the case of like charcoal, it's 16,000 for a block. And the longer they burn, the better. Or coke, which is 32,000, which is also really good. But we would take, we don't have a means to set up a coke farm right now. Or coal, which is also 16,000. There are some other weird off choice things like pyrothium dust, which would be 24,000, which we could do, and a few other weird choices. But you don't want to go too far, you don't want to go too rare in your materials because if you're doing it in a setup like this, you're eventually going to lose some just for due to it running too long, and that's just not great. Coal itself is 1600 ticks and coal blocks are 16,000 ticks. So you actually get more power out of a coal block than you do out of an individual coal nugget, which is why I do that, okay? I realized I forgot to discuss something really fast and I probably should be hiding because this is the thing I mentioned right at the beginning with the resonant ender. So if we feed ender pearls into the melter, well, it makes resonant ender. And with resonant ender, we can pass it into the fluid infuser with a lead platinum alloy to make endernium ingots. And why is this important? This is the top tier material for thermal foundation, folks. And it's really similar, it's just platinum and lead, and we can get platinum from the nether or from the twilight forest if I just go dig for it. We don't have any way to automate it right now. But this means we can make things like the resonant machine upgrades and servos and other more complicated things inside thermodynamics. All stuff at the top upper end of thermodynamics. So uh, I guess I should get started on that next time, huh? and finally get on to making those machine casings so that I uh, so that I can actually do this because like I feel like we're way behind the ball now that we can actually just make the top material. And it turns out I can make the Xenal alloy before it too, not too difficultly. So uh, I got no excuses, folks. We're, we're behind. I should have made these like, I don't know, many, many episodes ago. But I also was waiting on the replicator, so here we are. Anyways, as always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.